Untitled Goose Game. This is the game I was born. Press space to honk. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. I ran around in circles honking as I learned that I could walk or run. I crouched my way under this log, enjoyed picking up this boot, and... I learned that I could bend down to pick up things that were lower to the ground. Take this can. Come on, can. Let's get moving. Open the bottom latch. How do I get the top latch? Oh, I can reach it. Okay, nice. Ah! How dare you f try and fall on me? Spread your wings bit of intimidation. And just like that, I knew everything I needed to know about goose movement, and I was ready to live out my dream. Just go be a goose on the loose. After exploring the river a bit and finding my way up these stairs, I threw this bottle in the river and made a bit of a mess, before eventually returning to the first area. There were the makings of a pleasant lunch at this bench, and over here, a picnic blanket. What is my objective? If I was a goose, what would my objective be? My objective would be to mow the lawn, for sure. Tab to see your to-do list and controls. Oh, hello. Okay, now we have some objectives. Oh yeah, got a little garden going on over there, nice. Then we can zoom in. The objectives were about as goosey as I'd hoped. Get the groundskeeper wet. <laughs> Steal the groundskeeper's keys, make the groundskeeper wear his sun hat. There was a picnic task too, and one of the items required to get the picnic going was this radio, so I managed to grab it with my beak. Heck yeah. <laughs> and I waddled it over to the blanket. But I think I may have enraged the groundskeeper. What are you doing? Hey, don't take my radio. Oi! No, I need that for my picnic, bro. I cheekily grabbed the keys off his hip, which I don't think he appreciated either. Get the, get the keys. Get the keys. Run! <laughs> <laughs> it was clear this pesky human was going to be a hindrance to my important goosey tasks. But at least him opening the gate here allowed me to cross my first task off the list. Get into the garden. But how am I going to have a picnic now? Oh, damn it. No, no, I didn't want to close the... Why did I do that? Fortunately, the groundskeeper wanted to stack these bags of dirt, or whatever these are, back up. So he opened the gate once again. I immediately moved this bag again, just to annoy him. And also to lure him towards moisture. <laughs> Okay, we got the groundskeeper wet. <laughs> Great news. I generously helped the groundskeeper harvest this carrot, but he didn't appreciate that either for some reason. And it seems when you are a goose, if a human gets close enough chasing you, they spook you into dropping whatever you're carrying. <laughs> <laughs> Run! Hey! When he bends over, can I steal his hat? Just trying to get a shovel? I assumed the only way to get him to put on his sun hat for that task would be to steal the hat he was currently wearing, but obviously I couldn't reach his hat unless he fell over or something. For now though, he seemed to forget about the carrot I'd stolen and he was determined to go do something with that spade. And for my part, I saw a rake. And one of my tasks was rake in the lake. So I knew what I must do. I began dragging that rake with all the goose-tastic strength I could muster. Where is the groundskeeper? Uh-oh. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. If I truly wanted to get the rake in the lake, I was going to have to be more sleuthy than that. But I was still getting acquainted with just how the game works. So I turned on a tap, I purloined an apple, and I knocked over a boot. You know, just the usual good stuff. What is the strategy here? The strategy was a stealth maneuver. Sneakily dragging the rake over here behind this planter box before quickly checking to see what the big dingus was doing. He was preoccupied, but honestly, my goose's assessment was that this was a risky time to strike. But I am nothing if not a risk-taking goose. So I struck anyway, and luck was on my side. Oh, I think I can. Go, 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 go. Oh, yes. Successful rakage. <laughs> Break in the lake, baby! That was three out of six tasks done. I saved and quit at this point, and when I next played, the area was reset, but I didn't realize at first. So I set my sights on setting up a glorious picnic. I needed a sandwich, an apple, and a basket, all of which I acquired from the bench here. And this is when I realized it was reset. The gate was closed and the radio had returned here. I attempted stealing the radio, but the silly thing has a habit of turning on every time you grab it. So the groundskeeper was alerted. No, don't go get the radio. Where you going, bro? I took the opportunity while he was distracted to move a carrot over here out of the way and to grab some jam, which was over on this table deep in the groundskeeper's territory. I managed to sneak it down my stealthy route on the right behind the planters. Just curious about my carrot that I stole? Don't worry about it, man. It's all good. I ran off with the jam while he wandered back to place the radio down. And when I was bringing the carrot over, I realized I could swim with items in my beak, which seemed like it might come in handy. What else can we steal? Hello, idiot. Oh, sorry, my bad. Don't go... Ruining my picnic, all right? While old mate was writing the shovel I'd knocked over, I pulled the same stealth maneuver to sneak the thermos out. All right, what is the idiot up to? Think we're good? Coast is clear? 
Smuggle the thermos out. Go, 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 go. Spread the wings for dramatic effect. The picnic was already looking pretty impressive, but next on the list was a pumpkin. And lucky for me, old mate decided it was time for some digging. So as he went to grab his spade, I was able to drag a fat pumpkin over. We just need the radio. I'd left the radio till last, knowing that it would undoubtedly draw his attention once the music started blaring. And my plan was to simply outrun him. And for some reason, he didn't chase me very fast. So it was an easy waddle to victory. <laughs> yes, we did it. Sucked in, idiot. I got my task done. Go get your radio, I don't care. How do I make him wear his sun hat? I feel like I need to steal his existing hat somehow. I tried placing a large number of carrots in the crate, hoping he'd bend down and perhaps I could grab his hat. But he didn't really care. He was just determined to clean up my picnic. What a party pooper. I decided to have an attempt at stealing his keys instead. And it was easier than I thought it would be. I stole them. <laughs> You can't get me in the water, you idiot. And with that, a bonus task had appeared on my list. Make the groundskeeper hammer his thumb. Oh, okay. Well, you, you are getting me in the water. That's outrageous. I put his keys over here, never to be seen again. I think if I honk at him while he's using a hammer, but how do I get him to use a hammer? Oh, he's getting a hammer? This fella is a little indecisive and clearly can't handle a goose meddling in his affairs. Oh! Ooh. I attempted to climb onto the orange esky, hoping I'd be able to reach the sun hat, but my little goose legs were not up to the task. Can I feel the watering can? Up? Nope, can't do that either. I watched the groundskeeper clean up the outrageous mess I had made, which took quite a while since it was indeed an outrageous mess. But finally, he returned to his regular routine. He's doing something with a sign again. I don't know what the sign nonsense is. Apparently, he'd had enough of my shenanigans as he whipped out this no geese allowed sign. Here we go, here we go. This is my moment. As he began preparing for his hammer swing, I let out a cheeky honk, but apparently my timing was wrong because he just gave me a look. The next go round, I was more patient. I waited for him to wind up a big juicy swing and my honk was successful. <laughs> And apparently his thumb pain was so excruciating that he lost control of his legs and fell through the gate, opening the way forward to the next area. I added insults to injury by attempting to steal the sign, but I soon let him get on with it so that I could look for my opportunity to steal his hat. Because even though the way forward was now open, I still had one more task to complete in the garden. He was determined to continue cleaning up the picnic, but once he was done with that... Okay, he's gonna do some spade work. When he got down on all fours to dig, I darted into strike. Oh, I had a chance there. Okay, this is how we do it. On my next attempt, I managed to get it off his head revealing his glorious shiny dome. But I didn't make it very far before he snatched it back. But on the next go round, success. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. No. No! I just want to expose your beautiful bald head to the world, my friend. I then failed again. I couldn't seem to get a big enough lead on the pesky fella. And then I bumped a pumpkin and distracted the idiot for a bit. And then I made another respectable run for it. But once again, I couldn't quite make a clean escape into the water. But then, finally... Go, 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 go! Yes! I took the hat deep into the woods where there was no chance the groundskeeper would follow. And soon... Successful mission! <laughs> Yes, make the, make the groundskeeper wear his sun hat. Right, let's put that can in there and off we go. See you later, nerd. I'm done with your area. Nice hat. Nice hat. Next area, what do we got to do? Break the broom. Trap the boy in the phone booth. Make the boy wear the wrong glasses. Make someone buy back their own stuff. Get on TV. Go shopping. That sounds like a riot. And so I waddled over to High Street, featuring the boy I was destined to bully, this market I was destined to steal from, and a little yard over on the far right. And what is a goose to do except get to work? When I ventured too close to this lady's market area, she whipped out her broom to fend me off. And I needed to break that broom, so it was time for a tug of war. <laughs> While she was distracted fixing her broom, I stole some glasses because I needed to get the boy to wear the wrong glasses somehow. But it turns out she's a very determined long distance runner. So I gave up on that idea for the time being. How do I steal this boy's glasses? I stole the toy plane from the bench and used it to lure the boy towards the phone booth. Get in the, get in the phone booth. I played some football out the front of the TV shop before sneakily sliding this basket away while the market lady wasn't looking. I yoinked some toilet paper too. We gotta try and do a stealthy shopping mission. We got loo paper. Oh, you'll never find it. The lady was back, so that put a pause on my shopping efforts. But that just provided me the chance to unlock a new fear for this little dingus. Today, he learns he is deathly afraid of aggressive goose honking. <laughs> All right, I need to try to scare him into the phone booth. But then how do I lock him in? I honked like crazy, shepherding the boy towards the booth. And I soon had my answer. I didn't have to do anything to trap the boy in because he trapped himself in to find refuge from my ferocious advances. He immediately jumped on the phone and called the storekeep in the TV store to come help him out. And when she emerged to do that, I noodled my way into her store. She managed to shoo me out, but she still hadn't helped the boy to freedom. So I had another opportunity to trespass. And this time I figured out what I was supposed to do. Can I press that? Get on TV. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's go. I put on a great show for all the viewers, and reports showed that ratings increased tenfold thanks to my antics. I had a task to get someone to buy back their own item, so I grabbed the toy plane again, but this time took it over to the lady's shop, where I left it in a likely spot next to the other toys that were for sale. Did she put it on the shelf? She did. Okay, now the boy will buy it back, hopefully. The lady got busy scanning stuff on the shelf over on the left side of her shop, so I got busy stealing stuff from the right side. I grabbed a carrot and dropped it in the basket. Where's the carrot? I don't know. Where'd it go? I grabbed this hairbrush and attempted to outrun her, but I should have learned my lesson. There is no outrunning the athlete market lady. I made use of that distraction, though, snagging this tinned food and running it the long way around to drop in the basket. Where's my tinned food? I don't know. I had a bit of a shocker trying to grab the hairbrush while her back was turned, but I got there eventually. <laughs> he got away with it. And it's fair to say my basket was getting pretty full. I made another mess over here to create a distraction and... That's got to be cleaner. Go, 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 go. And with that, I had just one more item to go. Just need a toothbrush. I'm really struggling to see a toothbrush, man. I stared at the store for a bit, but simply could not see one. So I moved on to explore the area. Maybe there's a toothbrush in the bin. There is a toothbrush. A toothbrush in the bin. You tricked me. Don't even have to buy the toothbrush. That's a freebie from the the gift basket, also known as a bin, also known as a trash can, also known as lost and found. All right, in we go. We went shopping. Let's go. I used some petty theft to distract the lady once more and capitalized on her absence to grab these glasses unseen. And then it was time to watch the boy like a hawk or like a goose, I guess. He did something with his glasses just before. I don't know if he like cleaned them or something. I feel like if I spook him while he's cleaning his glasses, he dropped them. And then I put these glasses and steal his glasses and then victory. Where's my plane? Oh, on, clean your glasses. That didn't work. I guess I timed it wrong, because when he next took off his glasses, my honk was effective, and the poor blind dingus was stuck fumbling around on the ground. And this was definitely bullying. I was a big fan. I grabbed his glasses and took them out of reach and brought him the stolen glasses. They're right there, bro. You got them? No, a little, little, little more help for you? Here you go. Come on, big fella. Yeah! Ha <laughs> ha! Not your glasses, mate. With that, a new task was added to the list. Trap the shopkeeper in the garage. In the garage. All right, now how do I get this doofus? For some reason, I stopped speaking there, but what I meant to say was, how do I get this doofus to buy back his own toy plane? Step one was to steal back said plane from the shop, which took a bit of doing because the lady did indeed defend it as if it was her merchandise. I got your, I got your plane, you idiot. Step two was to lure the boy with the plane. The plan was to get him right into the market area, but I may have gotten carried away with some vigorous honking. I thought things would work out anyway, as the boy strolled back through the middle of the store. Make that boy buy that. But the silly woman was distracted by some errant chalk that I may or may not have meddled with earlier. I soon tried again. No, don't steal. Thief! I was able to keep him there until the lady came back. And I think it was about to work, but I foolishly distracted her. Make him buy it. Thief! <laughs> How do I make this happen? It's not working. Once I got out of her way, things finally clicked and the two began having an argument. <laughs> Cough up, boy. Yes, all right, finally. And all that was left to do was trap the shopkeeper in the garage. This garage wasn't actually open before, but now it was for some reason. And luring the poor lady into the trap wasn't a particularly hard party trick to pull off. Wait, go. <laughs> yeah. We did it. <laughs> High street to-do list complete. She used the side door to make her escape and came back through this gate, which was now open, providing me access to the next area. I waddled forth and soon found myself looking upon some back gardens. This one here had a dodgy spot in the fence, which I soon broke through. We made it into someone's backyard. Make someone break the fancy vase. Help the woman dress up the bust. Make the man spit out his tea. Get dressed up with a ribbon. Make the man go barefoot. Do the washing. Hello, just uh, just visiting. Gonna wait for you to sip your tea. He soon put away his paper and grabbed the tea. So I went in for the honk, but no tea was spat. You need to wait until it's in your mouth. Did you spit it out? After my third try with no tea spittage, I gave up that tactic and moved on to explore some more. I feel like I can make you barefoot if you if I get you to go in the water. You're gonna want to take your wet slippers off. A decent theory. And by the look of it, dropping the pipe in the middle of the fountain did cause him to get his slippers wet when he was collecting it. But no bingo. He went back to reading his newspaper, apparently content to keep his wet slippers on. Which is a very gross feeling. What a weird bloke. Pretty much immediately after that, I worked out the real strategy to get him barefoot. After one failure resulting in a classic wild goose chase, I managed to snag the first slipper again and this time I got some distance. Get the slipper so far away he can't be bothered getting it back. Wait, do I need to wash the slipper? I need to wash one slipper. Okay. While out here, 
here, I decided to investigate down this path I hadn't been down yet. I found this well, and... Okay, this is back to the start. Can open that gate, because why not? There was a blue ribbon down here, so I grabbed it in case it came in handy. And across this bridge was another gate locked from the other side. Down here, I opened the gate that connects back towards the garden and high street. Nice, okay, so we're opening up the map as well. Convenient, convenient. There was a coin next to the well, so I was convinced it was a wishing well scenario. And perhaps something would happen if I dropped the coin down there. But for the life of me, I couldn't seem to make my gooseneck long enough to drop the coin down the well. So I soon gave up trying and headed back towards the back gardens with my blue ribbon. Once back, I realized old mate sits with his legs crossed the other way while sipping tea. So I went in for the yoink. Ha ha. Barefoot idiot. <laughs> it's alright, you can have it back. I got my task done. Let's untie this. We can get through into here now. Oh, I see. Get dressed up with a ribbon. Hang on. Ah. If I bring my ribbon over here and just stand there like an idiot... Will she dress me up? But when I went to grab the blue ribbon, it had disappeared. I ran all the way back to where I'd found it originally and no luck. When I saw the coin again on my way back, I was struck with an idea. A goose walked up to the lemonade stand and said to the man, right in the stand, hey, got any grapes? I got money. I tried to uh, purchase uh, some goods. Got attacked with a broom. What is the world coming to? After all that nonsense, I returned to the man's yard and randomly threw the coin in his fountain. And this is how I learned that if old mate finds a foreign object in his yard, he throws it over the fence. I guess he just assumes every random item belongs to his neighbor, even if a wild goose brings it in. That actually solved the mystery as to where the blue ribbon had gone. The big dingus had thrown it over the fence, and the lady next door had placed it neatly next to my good friend's statue goose. Upon discovering this, I of course did the sensible thing and stood still like a statue. Because surely that would inspire the lady to assume a mysterious new goose statue had appeared that she simply must place a ribbon on. Meanwhile, the lady was weirdly peeping through the lattice. Why, why is she spying on him? What the hell? Go on, adorn me with a ribbon. Adorn me. It seemed the lady was wise to my tricks and was able to discern that I was in fact not a statue. Back to the drawing board, I guess. While she was fixing up the fence, I dragged the statue goose out of the way and tried a more elaborate deception. There's no other goose. I am the only goose. But that was destined to fail too. Probably because she saw me vandalizing her goose statue. Bro, what are you guys looking at? Put the blue one on me, please. Are you guys good? Just trying to goose it up. Hey, don't kick me. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm not sure what that was all about. All I knew was my ingenious plan had somehow failed. I found the bus that I needed to somehow help the woman dress up over here. And I came up with a new plan to make the man spit out his tea. Go on, drink some tea, idiot. For some reason, the lady had an enormous bell here. Most convenient. But it didn't work. I must have got the timing wrong. And I wasn't able to have another shot at it because the bell needed to be reset before I could ring it again. The woman soon reset it, but I'd moved on to different shenanigans by then. I'd found the fancy vase that needed to be broken, but I didn't get far with that either. This lady was too vigilant. And I was having a much tougher time with this third area than I'd have with the previous two. I managed to distract her by moving the weird fish statue. And I used my chance to get the goose statue out of the equation, hiding it behind here. And then I become a replacement goose. Replacement goose. You see those aggressive white lines around me, that's the game signaling I should right click to interact with the area, which would get my goose in the proper pose to mimic the statue. I somehow failed to realize that's what I needed to do. What? How did that not work? Oh, am I oh I'm supposed to press the button. Uh... What? Are you wise to my schemes? While her back was turned as she put the vase back in place, I made it like a statue once more, and this time she hadn't seen me, so I had success. Yeah. Finally, I have a red ribbon. Boo! <laughs> I pulled the drawer out of this dodgy desk here, causing it to fall. After playing the chimes for a bit and randomly hiding this bra in the corner, I finally realized that the fallen desktop provided a ramp by which I could return to the man's back garden next door. For some reason, old mate raged at the fact that I was wearing a ribbon, so he started chasing me. But I made my way back into the lady's garden, grabbed the fancy vase, and after a minor hiccup where the lady stole it back for a bit, I managed to take the vase with me into the man's yard, and my latest plan towards vase destruction was afoot. This guy needs to do what he needs to do. <laughs> he threw it back over. <laughs> yeah. He threw it back over. What an idiot. Hey, he stole my ribbon. I began bringing the laundry list over to the fountain, in which I assumed I was meant to undertake the washing task. It's funny about the vase. <laughs> When I returned next door, the lady was in the process of putting her bra back on the line, but she dropped it in favor of fixing up the fence. So I grabbed it and made a run for it. This is very deviant behavior, stealing a, a woman's bra. 
What a naughty goose. This bloke has a habit of very aggressively looking behind his paper every few seconds. So I waited for a gap in that pattern before I snuck the bra through. But for some reason I did it really slowly and he saw me on his next surprise look and my entire plan was ruined. All right, let's test this though. Okay, so I do need to get it in there. At least I now knew this fountain was indeed the spot where I was meant to wash all the clothes. But I was gonna have to be way more sneaky about it because if the fella in the cardigan gets wind of it, he does what he does best and begins tossing small clothes over the fence like a maniac. Meanwhile, the ladies yard was in absolute shambles. But I managed to grab this sock and test out a new strategy. I thought perhaps for phase one of my plan, I could stockpile all the necessary washing items over here and then carefully get them to the fountain during phase two. Phase one went well. I ran way back here to grab that slipper I disappeared earlier and I stole the soap from the edge of this bath too. Phase two began when I distracted the man by messing with his hat and cricket bat. Don't let him see you. Go, 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 go. Yes. That other sock somehow remained in the fountain from earlier, by the way, which was convenient. While my friend was still distracted by his fallen cricket bat, I was struck by a different idea. Perhaps it was time I stole this hat for good. I think I need this hat. I'm pretty sure that's what we need. And so I took the hat over and placed it down right next to the bust. I like how when he finds something on his side, he throws it back. When she finds something, she just puts it on her statues. Here we go. Here we go. Dress up the bust, come on. So my plan worked, but I didn't get the task crossed off my list just yet. So clearly the bust needed some more dressing up. Oh, do I need the glasses too? I think I need the glasses too. Maybe the pipe as well. Oh gosh. I employed some more grade A cricket bat misdirection and made a waddle for it with the pipe. Yes, yes. I don't think the bust really has a mouth. So I don't know how this is going to work, but you'll find a way. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Nice job, nice job. For the glasses, I didn't even bother with Cricket Bat Silly Willies. I let the newspaper do the hard work for me and soon the bust was finally all dressed up. They're clearly your neighbor's items and you just put them on your little statue. Outrageous behavior, honestly. Let's get the rest of the uh, the washing up done. I continued smuggling from my laundry stash over here, successfully getting past the cardigan fella while he was distracted, but... No, 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 she saw me across the... You can't do anything about it, woman. I snuck the soap by next. Keep her in the newspaper. Don't mind me. Definitely not doing some washing for some reason. And smuggling the final sock proved uneventful too. Yes. Washing done. Pair of socks, pink bra, one slipper for some reason. Make someone prune the prize rose. Interesting. Old mate one slipper here picked up this rose card thingo and started doing something with it. This is the prize rose, I guess. Turns out he was crafting a no geese allowed sign to place on his fence. Meanwhile, I managed to pull the planter box the rose was in over a little bit. Oh, I see. We can cause accidents to happen. I ducked into the lady's yard and vandalized the bird shaped plant here. And this inspired the lady to whip out her head sheer pruner thingo. And while she was tidying up the bush. And in the process here, she accidentally she did that on purpose, dude. <laughs> These neighbors love each other, man. The lady was apparently a big fan of my help providing her the opportunity to murder her hated neighbor's rose because she decided to dispense with her no geese sign. I think she likes me now. So she got rid of the no goose sign. Okay, so that's where I'm going next. What the hell are you doing, man? Why you snip my rose? Screw you. I didn't touch your rose. Yeah, you did. I just watched you prune it. Screw you. Why is your sock in here? All right, how do I get this idiot to spit out his his tea? It's got to be the bell, right? I probably just haven't timed it, right? So we let these idiots clean up the yard and then we go for the bell shenanigans. <laughs> She's doing the bell dance. Yeah. Mm, mm. Should I reset the bell? Or should I shoo this goose? Should I reset the bell? <laughs> or should I shoo this goose? These are the questions. These are the questions I've been asking. And after a little wait, it was time to slap that bell. There we go. Spit out your tea, man. Why you ring my bell? I'm trying to drink my tea in peace, woman. Screw you, I didn't touch the bell. I hope you choke on your tea. All right, what are we doing? Let's get this coin. I'm gonna take this coin with me for sure. Onward and upward, friends. Where are we now? We're in some nerd's backyard. And with that, the back gardens list was complete. What the hell? <laughs> That was successful. I saved and quit at this point. So when I next played, the world was reset and the coin had gone. But I don't really know why I brought the coin anyway, so no big deal. I dragged this package really far away to be annoying and soon found myself out the front of this fine establishment, which appeared to have a bouncer standing guard. I wandered around and found two different gates to open up before suddenly pondering what it would actually take for me to get 100% of the achievements in this game. There are 15 hidden achievements. And I suspect they're like, just silly things you can do. Oh, what's this? Get into the pub, break the dartboard, get the toy boat, make the old man fall on his bum, be awarded a flower, steal a pint glass and drop it in the canal, set the table. It seemed there was no way into the pub as this bloke relentlessly shooed me away with elite goose bouncer skills, but I soon spotted my inn. Ah. 
A genius strategy. Hide in the box. This delivery dingus is clearly a bit of a goose herself as she somehow failed to see me hop in the box, but I won't argue. Successful mission. I let her ferry me all the way out to this back area. Freedom. I had a look around and found a plate on this shelf. And when I placed it on this table here, I discovered the plate was crossed off on my list. And so I knew this is where I needed to complete the set the table task. I waddled out to the pub's garden through this hole below the deck. And it seemed the delivery lady didn't care about my presence. And the old fella didn't seem too bothered by me either. Until I deliberately started bothering him. I'm not doing anything. It's too quick for me. I needed to make the old man fall on his bum. And I thought surely a classic chair pull prank was the way to do it. But as I waited for the perfect moment to pull the chair away, it seemed he had eyes in the back of his head. What is the right timing? It's very precise. I find this quite challenging. I just couldn't figure out how to get it done. How, how quick? Is this guy's next level? I tried many times, but clearly I was doing something wrong. How does that know? How does he hear that? What is this old man's reactions? He's Spider-Man. And soon I'd lost my chance because old codger decided to toss a ring. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got me in the noggin, mate. That's outrageous. After one last failed attempt to get that bum to hit grass, I decided it was time to play the harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sick of this nonsense. Let's try something else. What else we got? I checked this area under the deck and then foolishly walked too close to the bouncer and learned that he takes his job very seriously. No, no, don't catch me. I finally lost him under the deck. Can't get me in here, idiot. All right, see you, nerd. Oh, he spotted me again. As I fled across the deck, this lady joined in the chase too. And once again, these gaps below the deck proved to be my refuge. As I was trying to nab this pint glass from the table, I realized I could also hide from the lady under the tables. And I discovered why the task to drop a pint glass in the canal was going to be tricky. Because these things break rather easily. <laughs> my bad. Run! <laughs> Steal the fork. I managed to bring the fork all the way out back, where I finally made some more concrete progress on a task as I placed it on the table. Next, I tried to grab this knife here, but I found it tricky to target the right thing to grab, so the lady ended up seeing me. I'm sorry. Leave me alone. I just want the knife. I eluded her by ducking under this table, and as she wandered over to sort out the mess I'd made, I made a break for it with this candle. Uh-oh. Old fella's onto me. Fortunately, I had enough of a head start, so I eluded him too. And I was soon plonking the candle onto the table out back. I then returned to the troublesome shelf. I just want the knife, please. Yes. Ah! No! My knife! This woman is quite the security expert, but even she is no match for my run around the table like a goose technique. And soon the knife was added to the table as well. The last thing I needed was some pepper, which I'd spotted on this table over here. It proved to be quite an easy snatch. All right, we set the table and what a table it is. I would happily eat a meal there. I'd spotted the toy boat I needed to steal in this sink. So I turned the tap on so it would float up and then led the lady on a merry chase. While in the middle of that, I lost focus and decided to yoink this pint glass. I actually managed to get quite far with it, losing the lady as I hid under the deck. But then I realized I had no way of getting it out to the canal without alerting the chunky bouncer. I foolishly tried anyway, which of course resulted in some shattered glass. And I also managed to get myself shooed out the front gate of the establishment. But the bouncer couldn't resist cleaning up the broken glass. So I immediately waddled back in. I realized these ladies here possessed a flower and one of my tasks was to be awarded a flower. So I developed a theory. Surely they wanted me to perform for them with the mouth organ. Give me a flower. But alas, this was not the correct way to win these ladies love as no flower was forthcoming. I returned to the sink with the boat and this time actually followed through on my plan. But the lady was relentless and apparently I didn't get far enough with the boat to complete the task. But after getting a bit of a lead on her... Yes, we got it. <laughs> Run. Run! I saw the old man was playing darts, and I guess the way to break the dartboard was to get him to miss his throw. So I tried unleashing some honks to mess him up, but yet again, either my guess was wrong, or I simply could not get the timing right. I swear these guys are supposed to award me a flower. They seemed impressed by my honking, and then I noticed the lady in yellow was doing a little bow. Oh, maybe he wants me to bow? And finally, they raised their hands aloft. So I copied them with some wing flaps, and they were so impressed they rewarded me with their yellow flower. I developed a theory that perhaps I needed to smuggle a pint glass out using the delivery lady method. But there weren't any empty boxes lying around for me to hide in, so this clearly wasn't the way to do it. It's fair to say I was having a little bit of trouble with this area. I grabbed the bouncer's attention and attempted to juke him with some fancy footwork, but that was a prodigious failure too. Next, I tried placing a plate on the stairs as bait. He's got the plate. Run! Now I've got this idiot on me as well. Don't stab me. She's got a knife. Oh, we got this. We got this. We're home free. Yes! No, oh crap. She's chasing me a long while. She's gonna catch me. Oh, it didn't break though. That's impressive. I tried stealing it back off her, which could have been perfect, but I guess I clicked too frantically or something because I immediately dropped and broke it. I then came up with an ingenious new strategy. Yeah, maybe I can get the old fella drunk. Maybe that's what we need. My plan's not working. Fill up with beer. 
please. I'd learned that the glass doesn't necessarily always break. So I tested whether it would stay intact when dropped from a crouching position. And it did indeed, which meant I was able to stash it here much closer to the entrance. I got him distracted by placing a cheeky tomato on the steps. And with the shorter distance for me to run, the distraction was more effective. But he still saw me. This guy's got a goose instinct. You're not going to catch me this time, idiot. Please go in the canal. Yes! The pint is in the canal after a hundred years of trying. Goose! 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 I returned to take on the old man once more, and I decided it was time I tried something new. It turned out the chair pull prank wasn't about timing. What the heck, man? Okay, so I just need to be more aggressive the whole time. Drop a bucket on the burly man's head. Okay. The bucket was over here, and the lady came over to collect the no geese allowed sign. In the process, unstacking these boxes and revealing a bunch of tomatoes. So my guess was I needed to lure the burly bouncer with a tomato. I ran one from this box all the way to the front, hoping he'd be conscientious enough to return the red fruit back to the box when it came. Return the tomato, burly man. But he never came this way. I assume he placed the errant tomato in the nearest box available, so I tried again. But evidently I didn't lure him far enough, because he returned the tomato to this central box. I had a break from moving tomatoes around to bother this old man at darts once more, and my instincts still told me I needed to honk during his throw to make him miss. But because it hadn't worked earlier, I was wondering if perhaps I was wrong. But... My instinct was right. I feel like the timing is so punishing. Finally, only one task remained. To drop that bucket on the burly bouncer's head. I managed to tomato lure him right next to the back gate. All right, now, you idiot. Please get this tomato. Oh, and then come this. Go that way, go that way. Oh, he's doing it. He's doing it. It's working. Go, 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 go. It didn't hit him! Oh yeah, put it back up. Put it back up. I'll just throw it right back on your head. I then realized my mistake. There's a moment where he bends over to shine the tomato and place it back in the box. And I figured that surely must be the time when I was supposed to strike. Fortunately, there was another tomato he felt compelled to clean up just nearby. Polish the tomato, you weirdo. <laughs> yes! Success! We did it, now he's got tomato butt. With that, the pub to-do list was completed and old mate's burly bouncer had thrown the squashed tomatoes out and left the bin lid open, which provided me a bridge by which I was able to enter this final area. I of course opened the gate for convenience before waddling forth. Over this way was an impassable gate and back down this way, a locked gate. What are we up to here? Hello? Get into the model village. Steal the beautiful miniature golden bell. So for some reason, this village has a quaint miniature version of itself. And it was quite an intoxicating experience waddling through it because I felt a bit like a goose Godzilla, a goosezilla, if you will. Though I did show restraint and didn't actually destroy anything. There was also a miniature of the miniature at the end, which I found amusing. And you know how two seconds ago I said I didn't destroy anything? I lied, of course. Oh, what do we got here? <gasps> Church bell. I have to make it fall over. That feels wrong. It's such a cool miniature. Pull! Pull, you goose! Honk! Honk to victory! Come on, man. Oh, yeah. That feels that feels like it's... Success! Steal the miniature golden bell and take it all the way back home. Potentially tricky since it is dingling. Ring-a-ding-ding! Ring-a-ding-ding! They knocked over those idiots. Presumably all the townspeople would be enraged if they saw me with the prized church bell from the miniature village. So it was going to be a challenge to make my way back home. Fortunately, the same hiding spots were effective. And once I lured the burly bouncer with one of his beloved tomatoes and unleashed some bell dings from an undisclosed location below the deck, these buffheads were thoroughly bamboozled and I made my escape from the pub. This is when I realized the NPCs were acting a little differently for this portion of the game. They seemed like they were on the lookout for me. So I made sure to walk slowly so the bell wouldn't ding. And I snuck my way around the blue car to get over to the bridge. And this is when I realized the environment had changed a little too. No, they patched that thing up. Okay. To be fair, if I'd been able to just jump in the water, it would have made this a touch too easy. The well was boarded up too, I guess to avoid any well bell shenanigans. And of course, any shortcuts I'd previously opened were now closed as well. I was forced to go through the back gardens where both neighbors were on the lookout. I snuck by the ladies little patrol pattern fairly easily. And I managed to put down the bell here so that I could quickly make a ramp out of the dodgy desk. I hid over in this yard while she cleaned up a little, but I think she she saw me. Fortunately, she was bamboozled by a combination of the impossible to jump waist high fence and her profound respect for trespass law. So she soon went back to her patrol and I made my move. You're not athletic enough to jump the fence. Can you see me? 
I don't know how you wouldn't be able to see me. You must have very bad eyesight. I made my way into Cardigan Man's yard and my old entrance was blocked off. This seemed a bit tricky. I really wasn't sure how I was supposed to get past him because he was dominating the area below the arch. So he spotted me, but somehow I just ran for it and the silly dingus couldn't catch me. For High Street, I had a strategy ready to go as soon as I arrived. I hid the bell behind a hedge and lured the shopkeeper into a garage trap using a leak as bait. With the market clear, the TV shop lady's efforts at guarding the lower area were pointless. And of course, this boy is a wet napkin of a human, so I just honked at him and he pooped his pants. We're good, we're good. We used fear. He kept plucking up his courage for another go round though, so I eventually dropped the bell and gave him a thorough chase. Go away, boy. I'll eat you. I'll bite your butt. The final hurdle was of course old mate groundskeeper in the veggie garden. He was straight up standing guard at the gate. I left the bell safely over here and had a wander around to figure out my options. And I soon spotted a sneaky tunnel through the hedge. I somehow never saw this when I was here earlier, but in this case it proved my salvation as I slowly waddled my way through. And soon I was clear of danger, crossing the water to my home. Victory ringling dings, man. Past the boot and the dilapidated bicycle, under the fallen tree, and finally I was home. Take it all the way back back home. Is this not where I need to go? Oh, I've got further to go. <laughs> what? <laughs> How many times have I stolen the golden bell from this town? I love it. That's so good. That's what video games is supposed to be. It's supposed to be goose-tastic shenanigans. I love it. The credits may have indeed rolled on my first playthrough of the game, but I was still about 20 achievements short of 100%, which I was a little confused about until I realized my to-do list had just gotten a fair bit longer. There were 15 new tasks that upped the challenge and the hilarity, including tripping the boy in the puddle and getting myself thrown over the fence. I also needed to effectively speed run the to-do list of each area, completing all of the tasks before the church bells ring. And the church bells ring after just six minutes, so this was gonna be tough. I decided to knock over the 15 new tasks first and move on to the speed running silly willies later first up pushing a cabbage push the cabbage push the cabbage push the cabbage cabbage picnic baby <laughs> yummy cabbage picnic all right there's one out of 15 okay that was pretty good let's try and lock the groundskeeper out of the garden okay interesting this one was pretty easy too as i simply lured old mate over here with the blaring radio and once he was out i yoinked his keys and then shut the gate on him all right gonna try come back in Yes! For my next assignment, it was time to harass the boy. I honked aggressively and forced him into the garage in which I locked him. For some reason, completion didn't trigger immediately, but after a brief garage door battle with this lady, I had what I was after. I trapped the storekeep lady in the garage and got busy stacking stuff on her scale here, which was a little bit finicky. I probably should have used heavier produce, but I managed to get it to ding just as the lady returned. There we go, the, the scales went ding. Next, I executed my five-step plan for opening an umbrella in a TV store. Step one, trap an idiot in the garage. Step two, steal an umbrella. Step three, trap an idiot in a phone booth. Step four, await opportunity to trespass. And step five, enjoy a glorious umbrella party in a TV shop, preferably while on TV so viewers worldwide can enjoy the glory. <laughs> we got a beautiful umbrella on TV. <laughs> Ah! I next aimed to trip the boy in the puddle, and I recalled I'd earlier accidentally untied his shoelaces, so I assumed that was my ticket to a prepubescent faceplant. After a few failed attempts, I finally got the red laces untied, and... <laughs> that was in the puddle, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> he just faceplanted so hard. <laughs> I also stole his glasses for good measure. <laughs> this is actually evil behavior. Dress up the bust with things from outside the back gardens. Yeah, let's start with glasses from here and then maybe we can steal the groundskeeper's hat or the gardener's hat. I snuck by Mr. Newspaper here and placed the boy's glasses down, which of course my good friend immediately placed on the bust. As I was making my way back to steal the groundskeeper's hat, I was grateful I chose to go this way because I was reminded that a random dummy was sitting on this ledge. In the original dressing up of the bust, she put the pipe in its mouth, but I don't know where I can find anything that goes in the mouth. This dummy may be exactly what we need. Oh, I'm going all the way back to the start apparently because I'm lost. Lost. <laughs> I then had to wait around while this big goose did his rotation of chores until finally he got busy with his spade. I yoinked his hat immediately and apparently I'd gotten a fair bit better at controlling the goose by this point because it was a clean escape into the river. He was dogged in his pursuit but I managed to lose him at the footbridge and soon... Okay, this has got to be the achievement, right? There we go. I next got busy trying to catch something thrown over the fence and if I had to catch something it might as well be a pink bra. Except I didn't have much luck. 
are you doing, dude? Haven't you practiced throwing bras before? He managed to get it over finally, and I caught it. But I guess because he leaned over and dropped it rather than throwing it, it didn't count. My next object of choice was some soap. In hindsight, this was a terrible choice because soap is rather slippery. Oh, he threw it so far. What the heck, bro? The arm on this guy. Okay, come on, come on. Yes! <laughs> what a catch! What a catch! Uh, I need to get myself thrown over. How does that happen? I tried bringing the goose statue over and just standing next to it, hoping he'd somehow get confused and throw me over, but that was obviously a terrible plan. I next did all the silly willies necessary to trick the lady into placing a bow on me, and again thought that standing around like a statue might get me thrown over. But no, he just stole the ribbon from me. Another terrible plan. And so the mystery of how to get myself thrown over the fence remained unsolved. I conspired to get myself adorned with the ribbon once again, and I waddled off to the pub. <laughs> yeah, take that box in. Take that perfectly normal. <laughs> Oh no, she knows I'm in here. After that false start, I had better success sneaking in. And from there, it was an easy one to complete. Ah, we performed wearing the ribbon. Beautiful. And now that I was an expert at making the old man fall on his bum, it was easy to complete this next task too. Nice. Steal the old man's woolen hat. I'm popping off today. I'm gonna put it in there so I can't get it back. Now we're gonna try and get the toy boat in the river. Once I had the boat in my grasp, it was pretty much a repeat of the pint glass task from earlier. I just distracted the bouncer and made a break for it. Soon I was in the canal with the toy. All right. Toy boat under the bridge. Let's go. Make someone from outside the high street buy back their own stuff. Who do I do that? Maybe the groundskeeper? I never would have thought of luring the groundskeeper so far from his beloved gardens. But here I am with a stolen spade. The boy was still looking for his glasses, by the way. Poor fella. I managed to get him all the way over to the high street shop. Surely, surely. Yeah, make him pay for it. Make him pay for it. <laughs> yes, it worked. That was easier than I thought. And so the groundskeeper was bullied into paying for his own spade. And another bonus task was complete. Next, it was time to score a goal. But this ball isn't exactly cooperative. I spent about eight years trying to get past this area because apparently there was a slight slope. But many moons later, I finally got the ball to the back gardens. I let the silly cardigan man throw it over the fence for me, noodled it over to the leftmost garden, and... Yes, 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 no... They deliberately trolled me with a little downhill nonsense to make this as annoying as possible. I don't appreciate it. Okay, we've got a good angle here. We're about to score. Thank the Lord. Score a goal. 6.1%. That's still actually a fairly high percentage of people that bother to do that, considering how annoying it is. How do I get thrown over the fence? I don't know. And then other than that, we gotta collect the five flowers. First, I inspired the lady to snip the prized rose, and I placed it in the basket by the well. Next, I stole the tulip from the garden, which was straightforward as the groundskeeper was nowhere to be seen. Flower number three required me to distract the shopkeeper lady for the 100th time, which allowed me to make a break for it with this lily flower. And then it was time to perform for these ladies in the pub yet again. And I hid their flower under the deck for the time being, because I wanted to check something. I was pretty sure I hadn't seen a fifth flower anywhere in the town, so I wondered if perhaps it was somewhere in the miniature village. And yes indeed, I found a chrysanthemum. Coming this way also reminded me of a much easier route by which I could smuggle the daisy out of the pub. So after dropping off the chrysanthemum, I collected said daisy and brought it via this back way. There we go, collect the five flowers, man. Okay, this page is completely done. Now I just need to get thrown over the fence. I don't... No. My first thought was that perhaps the blue ribbon would somehow help. So I tricked the lady into placing it on me, but once again I was off the mark, as the man of course simply grabbed the ribbon itself. I then finally got on the right track to solving this puzzle. Is there something over here that I can get inside of? Of course, that train of thought immediately made me think of something I knew I could definitely get inside of. The box outside the pub. So I went and dragged that blessed box all the way to the back gardens. Oh, it doesn't fit. Oh, it does, it does. Successful mission. Oh, I flipped it over though. After a little finagling. Here we go. Come on. Yes, it worked. Beautiful. Boo. <laughs> That was the 15th and final bonus task. And each of those tasks had earned me an achievement, so I now had just five achievements to go. One for each speed run of the four areas, and a final achievement for getting every single task crossed off the to-do list. And so we come to by far the most difficult part of this playthrough, the speed runs. You can reset the world in the menu, which obviously resets the positions of everything, but it also resets the six minute timer until the church bells ring. Since I was already in the back gardens, I figured I might as well get started here. I managed an okay start on this first 
first attempt, smoothly getting the rose chopped and the ribbon attached to my neck, and I managed to smuggle some stuff while they were distracted fighting about the rose. But the attempt fell apart when the man decided to look for his glasses that I'd stolen for the bust, and this caused him to see the little laundry party I was trying to throw. <sighs> Screw you, you idiot. No, there goes the bell. And you get the idea. I'll spare you all the details, but this one was hard. It took me over an hour to finally get it. There was just very little margin for error and plenty of things that could go wrong. So after a few full attempts to try and cement my strategy, I began simply resetting each time I made a costly mistake. The successful run looked like this. I stole the first slipper and hit it on the other side of the fence so it was beyond his reach. I pulled the planter into place and immediately vandalized the bush so she'd get busy pruning. I quickly snatched the fancy vase as she was walking down to get the rose destruction task done for me and used the opportunity to get the ramp going. I carefully dropped the vase over, but I'd noticed old mate was going for his tea, which was perfect timing as it gave me the opportunity to knock over the tea spitting task without any wasted time waiting around. While he was raging about the bell, I smuggled the soap down to this corner and hid it out of the way. And while they were fighting, I managed to get the bra and one sock into that same corner. The lady had gone to reset the bell and tidy up the stuff that had fallen off the desk. So I grabbed the goose statue and dragged it all the way up into this corner so she wouldn't find it. I distracted the man and took his pipe to the bust, and he finally noticed the vase and broke it for me. While he was confused about the pipe I'd stolen, I stole his hat too. But as I was bringing it over, I decided to prioritize this sock, because the lady was elsewhere. Once it was in that same corner, I grabbed the glasses to finish off the bust, and then it was time to do the laundry. But I still needed to get the man's second slipper. Everything was going extremely smoothly, and my luck continued. The man started drinking tea as soon as I'd finished placing the other items in the fountain. So once again, very little time was wasted, as I yoinked the slipper and completed both the barefoot and laundry task. Right, I literally just need to get dressed up with the ribbon. There's nothing else for me to do. It's crucial she doesn't see you jumping in to pretend you're the statue, as this causes her to shoo you off and wastes a bunch of time. So I made sure to use the distraction of her tying up the fence and... Okay, is it gonna happen? Please, please. Come on, come on, come on. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Complete the back gardens to do this before the church bell rings. That was my fifth, like, full attempt. And I reset, like, a few times on top of that, so... That took me like an hour. As you can tell, I was ecstatic and relieved. And as it turned out, this was by far the hardest one to finish in six minutes. And somehow I'd randomly chosen to do it first. Yeah, 1.4% of players have done that. I, th I thought it might have been low. But it was good to get out of the way, and it did set me up with the goose speed training I needed to dominate the other areas. I tackled the garden next, and since there's only one NPC, along with way more space to use to avoid him, this one is just objectively easier. Also, the tasks aren't quite so complex. The hardest ones are stealing his hat, so he'll put on the sun hat, and getting him to hammer his thumb, because these require the groundskeeper to initiate specific jobs around the garden that we, the goose, can take advantage of. Failing to find opportunities to get these two jobs knocked over quickly is what ruined my first attempt, and my second attempt fell apart when the groundskeeper noticed my picnic and started destroying it. But my third attempt was smooth. I grabbed the radio first so he'd open the gate for me, and while I waited I moved a couple of these picnic essentials. I snuck a carrot out while he was walking the radio back to the table, and went to check what was next on his agenda. As luck would have it, he whipped out his spade, and so I stole his hat and lured him to the lake, which crossed off getting him wet too. While he was wandering off to put his sun hat on, I stole a picnic pumpkin, and I pulled the sign out so he'd be forced to hammer it back in. And just as he hammered his thumb, I made a run for it taking the rake to the lake. While I was there, I dragged the basket over to the picnic, and all that was left to do was steal his keys and bring three more items to the picnic blanket. Stealing the keys proved a great distraction to get the jam, and from there it was straightforward. I think I've got the lead that I need. Yeah, we're good. We got it easy, bro. Third go. Done. Let's go with less than a minute left. Okay, 1.9% of players have that achievement. Next up was High Street. And as always, the first attempt was to get a feel for things and see what I could learn so that I could optimize my route. I immediately scared the boy into the phone booth. And he, of course, called the TV lady out to help him. So I used the opportunity to get myself on TV. Two tasks done just like that. I annoyed the shop lady so she'd come at me with the broom, which I broke. And I used it to lure her into the garage. While she was in there, I got started on my shopping before luring the boy over here with the toy plane. But the lady didn't force him to pay for it, so this proved to be a pretty significant time waste. I stole a leak from my shopping basket in the chaos, and then tried again, and this time it worked. I used this opportunity to steal some cleaner, and I locked the lady in the garage again before stealing a hairbrush and tinned food. And with that, my shopping was done, and all that was left to do was to get the boy to put on the wrong glasses. Fortunately, I didn't have to wait long for him to start cleaning them. Yes. Oh, first try. <laughs> Let's go with less than a minute left. That was first try. 
that was pretty smooth i had some hiccups but it took me so many tries to do <laughs> do the back gardens high street one turn and of course the final frontier was completing the pub in less than six minutes i snuck in and immediately impressed some ladies with my goosey skills i bothered old mate so he'd stand up and when he tried to sit again on his bum he fell a seamless start i headed up to the deck and turned the tap on and while the water ran i dropped this knife through the hole in the fence once the water had risen i grabbed the boat which didn't go perfectly as the lady got a little rambunctious but it wasn't too bad of a time loss i then grabbed this fork and made my exit on my way to begin setting the table i checked on the old fella and it was another case of great timing as he soon started throwing darts. So I of course honked at him. I got the fork, this plate and the knife I dropped down onto the table. Except I had a little trouble with the cutlery flying everywhere. And then I grabbed both the pepper and the candlestick without any real trouble. Once the table was set I grabbed a tomato and set about luring the bouncer. Which worked without a hitch and I was able to drop the bucket on his head. And then there was just the one task remaining. To get a pint glass into the canal. The first glass I stole was broken when I somehow ran straight into the delivery lady. But I made a cleanest escape with the second one since the bouncer was still preoccupied washing tomato off his butt. I'm so close. Please, please, please. No! <laughs> I fell in as well. <sighs> I'm so stupid, dude. I had it first try and I dropped it on the floor. Yeah, so that was a bit silly. I was officially tilted after that. So my next two runs, I kept making silly mistakes and resetting in a rage each time. <sighs> I'm just, I'm actually tilted. I'm tilted because I stuffed up that first round and now I'm just playing like an absolute goose. But I soon calmed down and put together another smooth run with a very similar approach to that first run. And now slow down. Now I need to slow down. Yes! <sighs> Congratulations, a reward is waiting for you at home. And then we have it, 100%. 100%. The joy in my heart was profound as I headed home to see about that reward. Ooh, a present? Since I am indeed a goose, this present was a little bit of a challenge to open. It's a, it's a beautiful crown. Can I wear it? A beautiful crown. That feels good. A very juicy 100%. My plan here was to see if I could get the lady to dress the bust up with the crown. Go on then. Throw it into your neighbor's yard. Hey, what's he doing? What's he doing with it? Oh. What's he doing with it? He's hitting me with it. What's he doing? I thought you would throw it in your neighbor's yard. Bro, he hates me. He's just chasing me to the end of time. I wanted to put it on the bust. Oh, he put it on my head. What the heck? How did it end up on my head? I don't know how it ended up on my head. Anyway, now I have a crown on my head. 100% goose-tastic, goose on the loose, completed. Yes. This game is fantastic, by the way. Love it. Check out my 100% playthrough of Forager, in which I become a trillionaire. Cheers.